In this section, we will take a closer look at the point-to-point -point communication. To get started, let's first look at sending and receiving data using generic Python objects. In this mode of operation, the object to be sent is passed as a parameter to the communication call, and the received object is simply the return value. Let's send data from one process to another. In practice, we will proceed in the following manner. If the rank of the process is 0, we will send data, and if the rank is 1, we will receive data. We can note here that our generic Python object, our data, is a simple dictionary. In the send and receive function calls, we specify the destination and the source respectively. In addition, we add a unique tag to identify this transmission. For buffer provider objects, buffer arguments must be explicitly specified. This is done using a list of length 2 or more. For instance, a list with the data and the MPI type. In this case, the function will use the byte size of the data and the extent of the MPI data type to define the count. Otherwise, the count can be specified explicitly. In this example, we pass a NumPy array containing a thousand integers. In the first parameter of the send and receive functions, note the capital letter, we specify the list that we just discussed. MPI can also discover the type automatically for NumPy arrays. In this case, we pass an array of floating point data. Now that we know the basics, let's consider the example of summing two vectors. When dealing with only one processor, we would proceed by computing each summation one after the other. In parallel, instead, we will split this summation on several processes and gather all the results together at the end. This means that we will replace our usual for loop to several for loops where the boundaries are set to correspond to the boundaries set for each process. This is done in a client-server communication pattern. In this case, a server will send messages to several clients. For example, in the case of MPI, the server would correspond to the process 0, and the clients to any other processes. Once the task is completed on the client, each client can send their partial answers back to the server. Now, let's compute the sum of two vectors in parallel over a number of MPI processes. First, let's initialize a few variables like the MPI com world and retrieve the rank and size of the process. Then, we define the count. This will be the length of our vector. We will split the calculation of this vector over the number of processes available. Then, we define three vectors. Two data vectors and one where we will save our result. The first vector is a vector where the values increase from 0 to count minus 1. The second vector will have values decreasing from count minus 1 to 0. Therefore, by summing these two vectors, all resulting values should be equal to 999, the value of the count variable. The next step consists in splitting the summation onto the resulting available processes. We do this by looping through the remaining processes, sending over the corresponding slice of the vector, for which we set the start and end boundaries accordingly. Then, we send these two vector slices to the corresponding process, p, specifying a tag, in this case tag number 2. When everything will be complete and the several processes send back their individual answers, the process 0 will receive these messages into the third vector using the tag number 3. Finally, for any other processes than 0, we proceed with the actual partial summations. First, we gather information about the buffer size. Using this information, we can create two empty NumPy arrays. Once created, we can receive the data for each array. Using NumPy, we sum both vectors and send back the result. And that's it. As you can see, by running this code, all values in the C data vector corresponds to 999. Finally, it is possible to receive messages from any sources. This can be done by specifying the mpi.any source for the source and mpi.any tag for the tag.